Wapo ulipo natumai siku yako inakuendea vyema kabisa ikiwa leo ni tarehe tatu mwezi Mei mwaka 2020. Hujambo na karibu kwenye taarifa za mbiu ya KTN na Lasrim. Mtazamaji ambapo nitakuwa ni mwenye kukuarifu na taarifa kutu hizo zifuatilia kando na kukuletea pia taarifa ambazo zitakuwa zinakuja kwa njia moja kwa moja pale itakapowezekana na makala. Moja kwa moja tuanze na vidokezo. Jaji Saide Chitembwe pamoja na Jaji Marete Njagi wafika mbele ya tume ya JSC kuhojiwa kujaza nafasi ya jaji wa mahakama ya juu. Maadhimisho ya mwaka huu ya siku ya wanahabari yameangazia changamoto ambazo wanahabari wamekumbana nazo mwaka mmoja tangu ujio wa corona. Na wakazi wa Mdolongo wameanza kupanda miche ili kukabiliana na uchafuzi wa mazingira unaosababishwa na viwanda vilivyoko katika sehemu hiyo. Karibu kwenye taarifa za mbiu ya KTN na Lasri hii mimi naitwa Ali Manzu. Mtazamaji zoezi la kumtafuta jaji wa mahakama ya juu lilingoa nanga mapema hii leo huku jaji Saide Chitembwe na jaji Marete Njagi wakihojiwa na tume ya JSC. Hapo awali mahojiano hayo yalifaa kuanza mnamo Aprili 26 lakini zoezi likasimamishwa na mahakama kuu. Hii ni kabla ya mahakama ya rufaa kutoa uamuzi wa zoezi hilo kuendelea. Wawaniaji watano waliokuwa wamehojiwa hapo awali kwa nafasi ya jaji mkuu watahojiwa tena ili kujaza pengo la jaji wa mahakama ya juu kwenye zoezi ambalo litaendelea hadi siku ya Alhamisi wiki hii. If we join the Supreme Court where there will be other colleagues you know uh, working with you and uh, so, so far your honor you have been your own boss you know making your own decisions and uh, and uh, have you know enjoy your independence so please give us three differentiating attributes that you are going to take to that uh, court you know because you have our own strengths what is this that is unique uh, honorable judge that you are going to take to that to that uh, supreme court uh, to the supreme court uh, bring in uh, collegiality mm -hmm. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a personal in a, in a personal manner, I, I am a peacemaker. I am able to deal with the public relations so so finely. I make peace with everybody and anybody. That is what I would take to the Supreme Court uh, firstly uh, to enhance uh, collegiality, to enhance uh, team spirit, to enhance. Um, Uh, what we may require in the Supreme Court to be able to be effective and play our role, our constitutional role as uh, stipulated. The second one which I would take there is my exposure and experience. Uh, from uh, day one on uh, 10th of, uh, 16th of uh, I mean, uh, October 1980 to date, well over 40 years, we've been uh, in this uh, game, the game of the law and uh, we've learned the ropes. So you will not uh, be able to say that, or we cannot uh, say that uh, because you've been uh, your own boss, ATC, you are not superb or fit for this uh, kind of a position. When you have the know-how, when you have the exposure, we've been to the House of Lords, we've been everywhere in the, in the common law and the commonwealth. We've uh, been in Kenya, We've done uh, East Africa. Uh, we are familiar with this game, and uh, there's nothing which would uh, make us uh, any poorer in uh, dealing with the issue. Um, we also have uh, our own uh, good attributes. Like uh, I said last time, I'm a superb leader. It is demonstrated all over my life. Uh, I give, uh, I mean, uh, notable examples of uh, my leadership capacity. I've not been working alone and it is not possible to work alone. So this is what we would carry to the Supreme Court to enhance its efficacy in a, a constitutionalizing constitutionalism. 
mtazamaji mahojiano hayo yataendelea kesho kuanzia saa tatu asubuhi. Kwingineko baraza la waandishi wa habari nchini MCK limeongoza taifa kwenye maadhimisho ya siku ya uhuru wa wanahabari. Siku hii inaangazia hatua zilizopigwa katika sekta ya wanahabari pamoja na changamoto ambazo waandishi wa habari wanaendelea kukabiliana nazo. Maadhimisho ya mwaka huu yameangazia zaidi changamoto ambazo wanahabari wamekumbana nazo tangu ujio wa janga la corona. Siku ya uhuru wa wanahabari duniani imekuwa ikiadhimishwa tangu mwaka 1993. Today is my day to ask the media owners in this country to pay our children, their reporters and news crew very well. They deserve it. These people go to every length to get us the story. But in the end, how much do these people take home? I'm speaking as a stakeholder and someone who has been in the field across the country. An example, a media house sending a reporter to to cover some corruption issue in some health facility in my, in my own county of Embu without any means of transport or facilitation whatsoever. Then expect that the same reporters with their integrity. Really? Let us be serious and honest with ourselves. Pay these reporters well and then demand integrity. May we bear testimony to the sacrifices of our fallen colleagues in the course of duty and rededicate ourselves to service for the nation. May we also celebrate the gains made in the media space in terms of divergence and plurality while also seeking innovative solutions. May we also defend media freedom from saboteurs and stand for the right of a free but responsible media practice as we celebrate the day the under the, the the factors to underline are that the aim is to keep opening up media operating space to be more free we live in kenya and so we know we live in a, in the east african region and so you know if you stand up here and look around our region we may look quite better off Indeed, we always keep hoping East Africa and the African region can grow together in media gains. Kenya is not at a very bad place. We compare ourselves to progressive democracies like ours, South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana. You cannot mention 10 in that category. So we are not very badly off. However, we still have a lot of ground to cover. Na bado tukiendelea na taarifa kuhusu uhuru wa wanahabari ni siku kama hii ya leo ni kwamba wanahabari wamepewa changamoto ili kuhakikisha hawaegemei upande wowote wanapoangazia taarifa tofauti Mwenyekiti wa wanahabari tawi la Meru David Moshoi ametoa wito huo kwa wanahabari kujiunga na vyama vya ushirika kama njia moja ya kujiimarisha Siku ya leo imekuwa siku ya fanaka sana kwa kutokana na vile tumekutana hapa kama wanahabari na kitu ambacho ni cha muhimu ni kwamba tumeweza kuanzisha uh, chama ambacho ni cha kushughulikia masuala ya wanahabari uh, Meru Press Club itakuwa inaangazia masuala ya kikazi na pia masuala ambayo ni ya welfare uh, ikiwa wanahabari uh, wameungana ni jambo ambalo litaweza kusaidia hata kurekebisha mambo ambayo hayafai ili kuweza kudumisha uhuru wa wanahabari. Kwa hivyo hii siku imekuwa siku ya fanaka sana uh, tukisherekea siku ya uhuru wa wanahabari duniani. Naam. Shukrani. Pia ni kweni keza kupengine kuzungumza naye ambaye ni mdogo wako ambaye ni Dorcas Mbati au tuweze kutueleza kwa kifupi tu kando na ule uhuru wa wanahabari. Pia tumeweza kuona kwamba chama hiki kitakuwa pengine kikizingatia kuweza kuhakikisha kwamba wanahabari wanakuja pamoja chini ya mavuli kama pengine ile welfare. Uweze kutueleza kwa kina tu ama kwa kifupi tu. Pengine uh, kwa, kwa kirefu ama kwa kifupi utueleze uh, kile chama cha welfare kinaangazia mambo kama yapi kwa wanahabari. Ha, tumeangalia jambo ambalo linatutatiza zaidi 
ni ule ukosefu wa kazi na ama riziki ambao tuna, uh, tunaipata katika kazi zetu ni riziki dogo muno ambayo uh, kwa wakati mwingi sana ina inatutatiza kupata the basic needs katika familia zetu katika maisha yetu na ndiposa tunaposherekea siku ya leo tukasema kwamba tunataka kusherekea siku hizi ambazo ni uh, zitakuja baadaye tukiwa na ule uh, tukiwa na furaha tukiwa na nguvu ya, ya kimwili tukiwa na afya nzuri na tukaona haya mambo hatuwezi yafikia kama hatujakuja kwa muungano wa umoja ambao utatuwezesha kuweza kufika hapo na ndiposa tukaweza kuzindua Meru Press Club Welfare ambayo itaangalia masilai na kukopeshana pesa kwa wanabari wa kaunti hii ya Meru ambayo itakuwa pia tutakuwa na ile interest ya chini kabisa ambayo itawezesha mtu kuweza kuwa na riziki yake mwenyewe kuanza biashara dogo pale na ndiposa tuweze kupiga uh, ule ukosefu wa kazi katika nchi yetu ya Kenya tungeangalia tukiangalia kwamba wale vijana ndio ambao wengi katika nchi yetu na ndio wale ambao hawana kazi katika nchi yetu ya Kenya so tunataka ambapo to we fight poverty and also to lock the gap between uh, the poor and the rich kupitia huu uzinduzi wetu wa welfare club siku ya leo ya kusherekea uh, siku ya wanabari ulimwenguni Nam. Shukran kabisa. Namukitazama kwamba katika jamii ni wanahabari ambao huleta zile taarifa zile pengine taarifa nzuri ya mazile mbaya lakini unajua kwamba inapofika wakati pengine wa wanahabari kuweza kuangaziwa sasa inabidi ni wao wenyewe kuweza kujumuika na jinsi alivyoeleza Padre Kazimbatia ambaye ni naibu mwenyekiti wa wanahabari Tawi la Meru anasema kwamba itakuwa inabidi sasa waweze kuwaweka mikakati kuweza kuhakikisha kwamba pengine wanajikinga wenyewe kiuchumi ama kuweza kujikinga sisi wenyewe ili kuweza kukuja pamoja kwa sababu kumka kwamba kofi kofi azili pasi na viganja viwili na hivi wanasema kwamba pia kulikuwa na wale ambao walikuwa wageni ambao si wanahabari wakiongoza na yule ambaye ni naibu wa gavana wa kaunti ya Meru Titus Ntuchu ambaye pia aliweza kutoa ujumbe wake madhubuti kwa wanahabari kuweza kuhakikisha kwamba wanakuwa huru na kuweza kuhakikisha kwamba hawaegemi upande wote wanapotoa taarifa na hivi ndivyo aliweza kuzungumzia awali A free press is fundamental to a democratic society the press provides platform for for many of voices to be heard. It is the public's watchdog. It is the public's watchdog. Article 34 of the Constitution of Kenya clearly spells out that all forms of media are operated freely in society without government control, restriction, or censorship. An independent and thriving media holds governments and businesses to account and empower citizens to make better decisions for themselves and their communities. As county government of Meru, we support journalists to carry their duties freely, albeit professionally. The ability of journalists to report freely on matters of public interest is crucial for democracy to thrive. Nam na huku wabunge wakitarajiwa kuendeleza mjadala wa BBI siku ya Jumanne bungeni ni hapo kesho baadhi ya wabunge kutoka kaskazini mwa bonde la Ufa wameapa kuangusha ule mswada wa marekebisho ya katiba mwaka 2020 kwa vigezo kwamba maoni yao hayakupewa kipao mbele Mbunge wa Keio Kusini Daniel Rono amesema kwamba watashirikiana na wabunge wenye fikra sawia ili kuangusha mswada huo sisi tungependa sana wengi wetu wangependa irekebishwe lakini penye tumeambiwa hatuwezi shika koma ama full stop ama nini itapidi tu tunyoroshane tu, tu penye iko na lazima tuangushe BBI BBI itasimama ukiwa kiongozi kutoka kaskazini mwa bonde la Ufa na ukiwa tena mwendani wa naibu wa rais William Ruto je umekubaliana kwamba kwenye mswada wa BBI kuna mapendekezo ambayo tayari umekubaliana kama viongozi kwa sababu e, maoni zetu hazijasikiswa na kwa sababu penye tumesema irekebishwe na imesemekana hakuna kurekebisha kwa sababu ya hiyo tu tutaangusha BBI 
na mkumbuka kikao hicho kitarejea vikao vyake hapo kesho katika majengo ya bunge la seneti na hata lile bunge la kitaifa wengine kwa mtazamaji maelfu ya wafanyikazi wa kuchuma majani chai wanahofia kupoteza nafasi zao za ajira. Hii ni kufuatia hatua ya kampuni za majani chai zilizoko sehemu ya South Rift kule kuanza kutumia mashine za kuchuma majani chai kipindi cha corona. Kulingana na katibu wa tawi la Bomet chama cha Kepao Jared Mumanyi pamoja na wenzake wa Kiricho Dixon Sango wamelaumu kampuni hizo kwa kugeukia utumizi wa mashine hizo. Kampuni hizo zimelaumiwa kwa kukosa kuwapa wafanyikazi nyongeza mishahara. Sasa ni mwaka wa pili ambao wafanyikazi hawajaongezwa wa mishahara. Wafanyikazi hao ambao tunazungumzia juu yao ni watu ambao wamefanya kazi mwaka jana wakati corona ilikuwa kali na wamefanya kazi bila kupumzika wengine hawakwenda hata likizo. But hawajalipwa mishahara ambayo ingekuwa iongezwe mwaka jana na mwaka huu. Tungependa kuambia multinationals na makampuni zingine kwamba lazima watoke nje wakuje tumalize maneno ya CBI ambayo zimelala kotini. I mean katika eh, ofisi zao kwa sababu tulikuwa tumeanza CBA vizuri kwa mfano ya KTD tumefika sehemu ya pesa wameambiwa wakuje tumalize wameenda wamelala wanasingizia corona unapata kwamba watu wanaochosi wafanya kazi wenye wanafanya kazi za wale walikuwa wal, wanafanya kazi ya seasonal employment wamewatoa factories kisha walipi wamepatia outsource companies wenye wanalipa pesa kidogo sana unapata mfanya kazi alikuwa analipwa karibu shilingi 1100 kwa kwa siku sasa hii watu outsource wanakuja kulipa wamepunguza mshahara wafanya kazi by over 60%. Mfanyakazi analipwa saa hii wa KPD sio employer analipwa karibu shilingi 450 kwa siku. Na mtukiachana na hayo jamii ya wafugaji kutoka kaunti ya Kajiado imefurahia amri ya kuzifungua kaunti tano zilizofungwa hali ambayo itakayowawezesha kusafiri na kulisha mifugo yao. Kufungwa kwa kaunti hizo vile vile kulelemaza biashara ya mifugo katika kaunti zingine jirani na Kajiado huku wanunuzi wakishindwa kuifikia mifugo hiyo. Kwa sasa wafugaji hao wameanza kutabasamu kwa kuwa soko lao limeanza kurejea katika hali ya kawaida. Wafugaji hao wana matumaini ya biashara zao kuendelea kunawiri baada ya wanunuzi kutoka sehemu za kaunti za kaskazini mashariki wakitarajiwa kuonekana kununua mifugo hiyo. Ilikuwa yamefungwa sana. Hatukuwa tunapata hata kitu, biashara imetuharibikia hata mazai ya waleti mbuzi. Sasa na vile saa hii wamefungua. Sidani kama sasa kama atarudi lakini tunatarajia itarudi biashara nzuri. Naona soko si mbaya lakini tunavulimwa kidogo kwa sababu sisi tuko mpakani huku. Watu wa Kisende wanatusumbua kidogo lakini wakati imefunguliwa unajua wakati wa watu wa Nairobi ndio wanakuja kuchukua mbuzi wakati zile zilikuwa imefungwa imewekwa long boy yani tunaona mambo imekuwa mbaya lakini kutaku kuanzia jana imekuwa sawa biashara inarejea sehemu hii ya bisil hata tunaona malori kutoka other counties sinakuwa pia inaleta manufaa maana tunaona sasa tangia ilivyofunguliwa hizo kaunti tano tunaona malori ni mengi sasa tunaona biashara ya mbuzi iko juu na tunashukuru Mungu na serikali yetu ya Kajado County Central kwa sababu inajali sana ufugaji na kesi ya uhalifu dhidi ya gavana wa kaunti ya Nandi Steven Sang ilikosa kuanza mapema hii leo katika mahakama ya Kisumu hii ni baada ya kuthibitishwa ana virusi vya corona. Shtaka linalomkabili lilifanyika mnamo mwaka 2019 wakati kundi moja la wenyeji lilivamia shamba la majani chai na kuanza kuingoa mimea hiyo. Mwanahabari Kelvin Oguto aliweza kupata fursa na kuzungumza na wakili wa gavana Sang. As you say the hearing was expected to start today but as you've noted uh, the governor did not come to court for the reasons that he is on self isolation uh, the county government lost uh, the acting secretary to the county public service board just recently the barred was uh, carried out on friday of last week mm -hmm. and uh, while she was in hospital the governor had in, an interaction with her and also during the planning of the funeral uh, the governor together with other officials took um, uh, uh, to, took part in the planning. 
uh, the Ministry of Health, rather the Department of Health, carried out contact tracing and testing, which unfortunately returned eight positive cases. Out of the eight positive cases, some of them were also uh, in the planning committee, which unfortunately other members also interacted with them. And so the government, the county government has issued a memorandum asking everyone that took part in the planning of the funeral to self-isolate for 14 days and also to conduct uh, and also to, to appear today for COVID test. Uh, the governor will also be tested today and then thereafter we will, uh, we will know whether to proceed with the hearing or not. Of course the hearing will proceed upon uh, confirmation that he is COVID-19 negative. Na familia moja katika sehemu ya Magoro County ya Transnzoia ina matumaini kwamba jaji mkuu mpya atapata ama atawapa haki ambayo wamekuwa wakipigania kwenye kesi ya urithi wa shamba la familia yao. Kwa miaka 30 dada hao saba wamehangaika mahakamani wakisubiri kutolewa kwa uamuzi kuhusu urithi wa shamba la zaidi ya ekari 400. Shamba hilo lina ukubwa wa ekari 458 ni miongoni mwa mali ya marehemu baba yao Clement Munga Maina. Wanadai kunyimwa haki na kaka yao ambaye aliamua kuwagawia wana wa kiume na kuacha nje dada zake. Shamba iko Transoia. Kesi imetolewa kupelekwa Nairobi. Tuumie tikiti ya kwenda Nairobi, mahoteli tukalale hotelini Nairobi. Tunataka kujua kwa nini hii kesi ilitolewa kitale Transoia ikapelekwa Nairobi. At the moment tuko court of environment kitale of which imesema status kuwa zangu ni hapa na baka sasa kuna watu bado wananifata wanataka kunitoa hapa nyumbani tukijulikana tuko Nairobi tuko tayari kwa kuingia kotini kupeana ukweli e, kesi inabadilishwa sisi tunarudi mpaka hapa kitale tumefanya hivyo mara kadhaa mpaka sasa dada dada zangu wengine wameaga sisi tumebaki wa dada, ni, ni wasichana watatu wa, wa baba yangu. Sasa tunalilia serikali tunauliza. Sasa muda hiyo yote tumezungusha tumezunguka mpaka wengine wamekufa wame, wame bila kupata haki yao. Sisi tutapata haki yetu namna gani? Ndazamaji huku takwimu zikionyesha kuwa takriban milioni moja ya wakazi katika ukanda wa pwani ya Kenya wanatumia aina moja au nyingine ya mihadarati wale walio na nia ya kuacha wanapitia changamoto sihaba mwanahabari Tobias Chanje alitembelea maskani moja katika sehemu ya Marikiti kule Mombasa na kuweza kutangamana na vijana ambao walikuwa waraibu wa mihadarati ila sasa wanajishughulisha na shughuli zingine za kuboresha maisha yao baada ya kuasi dawa za kulevya Naam na rafiki wa kwamba taarifa hiyo itakujia kwenye muda usiokuwa mrefu lakini tukiendelea na taarifa zaidi ni kwamba uh, wakazi wa sehemu ya Mlolongo kaunti ya Machakos wameanzisha zoezi la upanzi wa miche kama njia moja wapo ya kukabiliana na uchafuzi wa mazingira unaosababishwa na viwanda vilivyo katika sehemu hiyo wakazi hao wanasema kuwa uchafuzi wa mazingira katika eneo hilo umemsababisha zaidi na ongezeko la magonjwa ama umesababisha ongezeko la magonjwa miche laki moja imeweza kupandwa aidha wakazi hao wamesisitiza kuwa ni sharti jamii izingatie usafi sehemu yoyote ile kitu ningeimiza wananchi ni kwamba tukipanda hii miti tafadhali kila mmoja wetu ajukue jukumu lake ahakikishe kama huyo mti umemea amewekelea maji baka ukakua kwa sababu miti mingi upandwa kama siku ya leo alafu inawachiliwa inakuwa isa west hakuna mtu anafaidika na ni kuharibu pia resources za uh, uh, serikali ni siku kubwa sana ambao tumefikiria kuja kupanda miti hapa Mlolongo Primary School na kama tu ishara ama example ndio tuweze kuenda kila pali public land hata private land kila mtu ambapo pote anaweza tupande miti na sio kupanda na kuacha tukipanda we try to nurture the trees 
na mradi wa kuweka lami barabara kutoka eneo la Musikoma kaunti ya Bungoma kule hadi Mungatisi kaunti ya Busia umekwama kwa muda sasa katika upande wa Busia hii ni baada ya utawala uliokuwa ukifadhili mradi huo kutoa shilingi milioni mia moja zilizokuwa zimetengewa mradi huo na kuzielekeza katika mradi mwingine haya yamefichuliwa na mbunge wa Nambale John Bunyasi aliyesema kuwa serikali itatenga fedha katika makadirio ya bajeti ya mwaka 2021 hadi mwaka 2022 ili mradi huo ambao umekwama katika soko la Buyofu eneo bunge la Nambale ukamilike Bali kupitia katika tunapitia huko juu. Eh? Hata jana kuna wenye walianguka hapa ndani, mama na mtoto. Na sio hawa heshima yetu sio ameenda wapi? Tunasumbukana tuna sana hapa. Kwa njia. E, wamelima mpaka huko juu mbiofu. Na wameachilia huko. Sasa huko chini tuko na shida atupiti. Haipitiki kabisa. Sasa sijui ile pesa ilitolewa imalize hii barabara ilienda wapi serikali tuangalie sana maalum uhuru wako atu, atusikize sababu hii barabara hivi sasa sisi tutaenda wapi serikali pia haijaweka pesa kutosha kwenye bajeti kama round hii uh, zile ambazo zilikuwa wako kulingana na matatizo ya uchumi wetu wa Kenya inaonekana pesa ambazo zilikuwa kwenye miradi zilichukuliwa tena kurudishwa kwa treasury kuwasaidia kulipa madeni na mambo mengine ambayo walikuwa wakifanya kwa hivyo ile uh, allocation ambayo tulikuwa na milioni moja ya barabara hii uh, ikatolewa mwisho mwisho kwamba kuna sehemu zingine ambazo zina haraka kubwa kuna zina emergency kushinda sisi Mtazamaji unaendelea kutazama taarifa za mbiu ya KTN na Lasri hii tunakwenda kwenye mapumziko mafupi lakini tarejea baadaye tuendelee na taarifa zaidi ambazo tumekuandalia endelea kuwa nasi